is setting up. It should be on in just a second. And amazing. I think we are live on YouTube, guys. All right. This is great. Excellent. Good evening, one and all. Thank you very much for joining us. Welcome to uh, season four, episode two of Lawyers, Artists, and Others Talk Love, Law, and Equity. Uh, this is episode two of our Freedom Sings series, and this is part one of episode two. Uh, today's event is called Pride, Love, and Art in India, A Journey Across Millennia. And we've got Rohini Malur and uh, Balakrishnan Raghavan with us, who have been uh, great friends of the show and our various projects for a while. And they've been with us before, and we're tremendously happy to have them back again. You can clearly see how happy they are being here as well, which is... It's good to be back. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Welcome, yeah. guys. Uh, you know, we have a tradition on the show of introducing ourselves uh, without speaking about what we do. We also have, we now have a catalog of you doing this without, uh, on, on our previous episodes without probably remembering what you said. So let's do it again. And then we're going to compare uh, how we introduce ourselves. So Ro, would you like to go first in telling us who you are without <laughs> telling us what you do or where you're from? Uh, hi, I'm Rohini. I'm cis, queer, she, her pronouns. Um, I'm a founding member of ASQ, which is all sorts of queer. I say founding member, I just mean that I was there while a whole bunch of the other, other people did a lot of the work, but you know, I was there, it counts. Um, I've been out in, I'm going to cheat. I'm in South India. I'm in Bangalore. I've, uh, I've been out for 10 years, uh, I think, now, like either this month or next month will be like 10th year anniversary of coming out, being out and being with other queer people. So um, I'm feeling, I, I don't know how I'm feeling about that. I'm feeling good and I'm feeling old and I'm feeling kind of like, what have I done for 10 whole years? Um, in a parallel universe, I have, I am a starship captain. Um, uh, Spock, uh, I'm, um, I'm going to say uh, the original series is the best series. Captain Picard is the best captain. And somewhere I am hoping to find a cat who loves me and possibly a person. The cat is, is the priority. So that's where we are now. Amazing. Thank you very much, Ro. Uh, I, think, I think you mentioned uh, Star Trek when you spoke to us last time as well. Yeah. I also only realized I've, I've, I watched Star Wars for the first time uh, during the lockdown. I really? haven't gotten around to Star Trek yet. I've, I've, I've got a lot of stick from friends uh, for this. I probably shouldn't have admitted this on YouTube. This is... It depends. You know, it's not everyone's <laughs> cup of tea. Do you like science fiction and, you know, that kind I, of it it took me a few attempts to have to watch it the first time or to get through episode four, mm -hmm. but when I actually got through episode four the first time, I just couldn't get enough. Oh. I then got through the remaining eight episodes in in three weeks. So I got I got Disney Plus to watch Hamilton, <laughs> and then I was like, I have Disney Plus, might as well try and watch Star Wars again. The whole and thing. I just got through it in no time, and uh, now I, it we. Uh, I feel like with, with a lot of the guests we've had recently, uh, we seem to have a lot of cat people amongst us uh, and big fans of cats. We had Nisha who joined us previously, who uh, yes. who also has cats. Ruhi, who works with us very closely, who has a cat named Chewy from Star Wars. And I'm like, I actually understand what the reference is, which is <laughs> great. Uh, but I'm, I'm sure I'll, I'll hopefully get around to watching Star Trek soon enough. And then I'll be able to understand the Captain Picard references and the live long and prosper references. But I, I, I don't know them from Big Bang Theory. So that's as far as I come. Uh, Bala, sorry. We've, our dearest Bala, please come say hi to us. Hello, hi. hello, hello, hello. So, um, yeah, I am uh, I'm Bala. I'm named Bala Akbar Bala Christian. I'm figuring out life. I'm, I'm on a pilgrimage to find... Uh, things that attracts me in terms of, uh, I believe very strongly in the idea of rituals in terms of what you do, um, uh, something to keep you 
uh, keep you grounded and something to keep you on, something to make you feel alive. And uh, my form of expression uh, in all of this is word, poetry, and ritual. Generally, I work in the trifold practice of uh, word, music, poetry. So, so it's just around those things. So I'm, yeah. So I'm interested in generally in literature, literature primarily of uh, uh, the Indian subcontinent of the past. And uh, I read a lot of poetry and uh, literature. And uh, yeah, I am interested in languages, scripts, anything old. And I'm like, yes, that's something I like. So, yeah. Even in people. <laughs> so yes. Amazing. Yeah. Excellent. Bala, welcome. Welcome back, I should say, to both of you. Uh, to Just Learning. It's amazing to have you here. Uh, Bala has given us a heads up that uh, he unfortunately won't be singing today, but he did mention when we had him last time that uh, he wants to share some of his poetry and write, uh, talk to us about some of the poetry he's written, and we didn't have a chance to get into it in great depth. So what we're going to do today is spend a lot of time hopefully hearing about his poetry, his writing. Uh, Ro is also a poet, who's uh, written a fair bit, and I'm sure she's going to share her poetry with us as well. Uh, we were putting the poster together for today's event, uh, I think it was earlier, earlier this week, right? Yesterday. And when we put on, we, we generally add a, a subheading to the name or, or, or a title to the name. And both of you were artist, explorer, and poet. And I was like, this is amazing. This is going to be so much fun. Uh, it's great to have both of you here. Uh, and we are here today to have a conversation on pride, love, inclusivity, uh, to sp speak about expression uh, through art, through, through literature, uh, through shared journeys and stories. Uh, both of you have obviously described your experiences with literature, you've spoken about your journeys. Uh, Ro, you mentioned being out for the last 10 years, which is, I mean, it's also great timing in terms of it being the two year anniversary of- Celebrating, uh, yeah. So celebrating, yeah. And, awesome. but- What do you do? Do you do something? I do? didn't do anything. I actually, because I think my reaction to the 2018, um, the, what I'm calling sort of like the final judgment was a sort of like banked anger. Like I didn't feel happy so much as well, fucking finally you've returned what we had because I came out in like, because if you come out in 2010, the community was then riding um, on the- victory. 2009 judgment. 2009 yeah. judgment and the the lawyers then when they talked about it would talk about how how beautifully this judgment had been written how it meant something and then um as uh, the 2013 uh, 2012 2013 the supreme court uh case was going on and the alf people would would join good as you and they'd say you know i don't think they understand what we're talking about because they ask these very silly questions. And you could see, this is, I think, uh, Siddharth Narayan um, sitting there and saying, I, I don't think, and you know, he's putting a good face on it, but you you kind of go, that, that, doesn't, that doesn't sound good. So when, when 2013 happened, I got angry and I stayed angry. And then when 2018 happened, I, I just sort of, felt like a sort of right this and rage rather than happiness. I was like, yeah, you've given me back what's mine. And I'm, I'm not going to be grateful or celebratory or, or any of those things. I was like, so I think I slept through Sunday. Like I just, <laughs> and I think I, go ahead, sorry. No, no. I, I, and what what I was just about to say is uh, the, the reason we we also titled this as across millennia is because there's so much history, and I, I, I was doing some reading up earlier this this afternoon, and we, I, I don't think our our schooling particularly touches upon the history when it comes to things like exclusivity and expression and equality. Uh, definitely not as much as as it should be doing, and. Uh, and and you you look at, uh, at at ancient buildings. You look at literature. There is there's so many stories of us being so much more fluid back in the day, 
till there are some expressions where uh, things started getting curtailed then there there was talks of how things changed when the british came to india and and we've sort of gone through the motions through the waves and and i feel like there's, there's so much more for me to read and learn about it but one of the reasons we wanted to come together today was to also acknowledge that section 377 is such a small part of this and it doesn't the transgender bill of the transgender rights act was mm-hmm. that that travesty started almost immediately after the 2018 judgment <clears throat> i feel like you you if you were in the community trans committee which i'm i'm not but you know you sort of realize that this had been building for a while and so like what's the point of this this law if you're going to fuck us over with this one over some of the fun and so yeah. don't do it in jail which yeah. okay thank you for not putting us in jail um yeah, and, the, and and there's so much more to it right and one of the things i actually wanted to uh speak about i mean uh I've, i've just been reminded from behind the scenes that what what one of the people we have coming on in part 2 is a trans activist who's challenging the trans act and hopefully we'll have that this friday but that's such a big conversation there's so much to learn and the whole pride movement as i'm coming to learn is not just restricted to section 377 or whether it's it's the l or the g or the b or the t or the q there's it's there there's so many challenges when when people talk about pride and speak about oh why why do people have to be as loud about it or any of that but it's all of all it is is it's a celebration of being equal why should we not be screaming that from the rooftops every day all the time with each other and till we come to acknowledge that we can be better with acknowledging that it's something that we should be celebrating all the time and that's that's the only way we're going to get better right and this is with my extremely sort of limited experience uh in this space being in london going to a couple of pride events uh we had pride happen virtually this year all over the world i'm not sure if you guys uh had a chance to uh, to participate or experience that and uh we we'll, we'll probably come to it in a second but did you guys have uh did you guys want to share something in relation to the history of of where we've come the 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 motions uh we've gone through to come to where we are today the history in relation to india in terms of your both in terms of your own experiences or stories or things you've read in literature wala would so, you go first which i mean have go ahead go yeah. ahead so Yeah so last day i was reading up for a piece that i was uh, premiering for the one year anniversary of uh, of the section 377 act uh, uh last september 6th so i premiered a piece and i wrote that piece and while i was doing reading for that piece it happened across a few months four five months you actually realize yes there is you all you always realize there is uh, there is uh, visibility there is fluidity in history but it's not as much spoken about or even explained properly because the translations are one of the most pathetic translations that are made of these words because uh, there's so many examples you can just start in the sense how they have just like screwed up translations to just uh, make it uh, uh, you know uh, heteronormative in some sense like if they nice. had uh, i'm just trying to uh, think about uh, uh, examples like for every like starting from the vedas to the sufi mystics all these translations have been muddled with and uh, ruth vanita so there are these lovely books that they have worked with uh, ruth vanita's uh, kidwai so they speak Same about this love in india yes 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 that book so uh, so that is one thing for like, the starting point for it also for me is is somewhere in the rigveda it starts off uh, most of the time in rigveda uh, the most of the the you can see shlokas the poems because vedas are but poems in the sense at that time it was uh, poems are not to be there's not the idea of beauty but there's an idea of uh, it's an interesting idea uh, the idea of poems is not of beauty but of uh, utility so i would write a poem and it would rain i would write a poem and the crops would bloom things like that so there was no rhyme there was not specific sense of beauty attributed to poetry so rigveda has his beautiful verses on fire and fire is supposed to be uh, the son of uh, two mothers dwi mata mm-hmm. so it starts from there i mean you have references uh, from there dwi the one born of two women now what are the two women we are talking about we are talking about two women basically the two sticks that are actually used to light a fire uh, both are both of them are feminine 
so which is why he is called so probably he's uh, 3000 years ago whenever they were written or recited he is one of the first children of uh, gay parents to say to say so and then you have examples from these uh, like uh, uh, examples of krishna and arjuna uh, examples of uh, harihara harihara is vishnu and mohini which are oft said because uh, most of the time what happens in these uh, epics is either the man turns into a woman or the woman turns into a man and then they have children and things like that for in kartikeya ganesh all of them have been born out of such things even ayappa has born is born out of hari and hara so there's always been this thing within the uh, you go to skanda puranam you go to vishnu puranam you go to shiva puranam uh, it's all there but the problem is yes it's there then like it's also in some sense like we speak about uh, uh, someone was talking a joke about how if 3000 years later someone finds this constitution and they'll read it and they'll be like oh they lived in a perfect society which is not the case i mean it's always written and then you have things that actually happen in the society so we don't know what actually happened in the society but uh, there are references and then they come much later because there is also this huge uh, hula hoopla around the uh, oh uh, it's an import it's a western import and uh, this and that arab scheme and persian arab says persians gave it and persians say christians monks it's just everyone's giving it to everyone else saying they gave it to us they gave it. but then the idea there is it's existed across societies all over the time and we yeah. just have different names and even with the sufi poetry like you take uh, i mean khusro or you take uh, madhulal you take anyone they have all written uh, in some sense they all border on homo eroticism and then uh, like for example even in krishna and arjuna there are references where they speak about uh, like uh, i think uh, in i forgot the text one of the ashwamedha parva probably of the mahabharata it says something like everyone entered their respective apartments and krishna uh, who is this beautiful man krishna proceeded to the apartments of dhananjaya and then it says uh, he is worshiped duly and furnished with every object of comfort and enjoyment krishna uh, of great intelligence passed the light and happy sleep with dhananjaya as his companion now These, all of these things are then the other problem with these texts is that's all is said nothing more than that you yeah. don't know what they actually do but they happy the, the, like they say there's this other word they say ramyata ramyata is generally used in these contexts of uh, uh, romantic love playing so they say ramyata but it also has other connotations so you never know what they actually meant but all of these actually hints towards a way a much more fluid much more open kind of society and you when you come back to the tamil sangam literature there you have references again of uh, male prostitutes these beautiful boys uh, who are there who are gifted by kings uh, they were called pedis in some sense so so you have these references all over and uh, they have existed all throughout and uh, again like we always uh, quote the oft uh, thing of kajraho here and kama sutra kama sutra is but one text which has this but there are so many more things that are hidden and also hidden because of the translators sorry i think as we went too much but yeah some no that was so beautiful bala thank you so much you no, no. given us yeah such such a nice summary of of things across so many spe- uh, pieces uh, thank you very much for doing that uh, Yeah, I'm sorry, Ro. You're about to say something. I was saying I'm, I'm glad you went on. It's it it it's so enlightening. Yeah. I just found examples of bad translation. I'll come back to that later once Ro uh, finishes. <laughs> yeah, please. Ro, he's he's um, passed back to you. Um, you know, I think uh, I I resist uh, looking too much to history for like. you know this notion of a queer utopia that that we had like the mahabharata was written um, 200 uh, please help me out the dates here but it was written 200 bc no one knows the dates that's the pro- problem the thing is anything relevant in india we say everything you touch is like 4000 years ago and then you say 1000 and they say right? oh god no 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 but no, 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 they, but it's you know, old it's, it's pretty the, old yes yeah. they say 2000 the is, whatever yeah that so it's it's a f- it's it's a few uh, it's a century here or there bc um the ramayana comes was written though it's set earlier or written a little later than that right? little before that no i think the mahabharata came was written first but ramayana is set earlier but these are all oral tra- traditions also right. yeah so the the, the, right. the it's codification shall we say the mahabharata yeah, was sure. first and the ramayana yeah. was codified later but 
we already know from those codification times that things like say, for instance, caste were set, right? Um, uh, duty and inheritance were set. Um, the role of the woman was set. So it's like whenever these, these examples of heteronorm, uh, of homo, homosexuality or homo rom, uh, eroticism or homo romantic interaction show up, and even of, of uh, people who are transgender, um, I go, these, 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 these people are always put forward as there's an extenuating circumstance. There's, uh, there's um, a setting, they are outside the, the bounds of what is normative society. Krishna does not get to be Arjuna's uh, partner. Um, Krishna gets to call all of these 1,600 women his wives, but he never gets to call Arjuna his husband. Krishna is worshipped. And that is why that love is, in some senses, an okay love to express in that way. But you don't find Arjuna wandering around like the rest of the, the country going, well, you know, I've taken this princess as my wife. I've taken this princess as my wife. Here's my prince lover. And I'm moving on. Mm -hmm. like, true, true, true. Very true. It's, so like yeah. all the time, these stories become like they're good stories and it's good that they exist. But I, I resist this notion that it was accepted. Um, Arjuna was cursed to be uh, a hijra, uh, which got translated in the first book that I read as eunuch. And it was a curse. It wasn't a, a, like, you know, go be a woman for a little while. Yeah. It was a mm -hmm. curse because you will not do your manly, manly duty yeah. of having sex with me. And his reasons for not having sex with the woman who, who, who cursed him is that she was his mother. Like, she wasn't. But... You know, so like all these things, and the caste system is a very large part of both the Ramayana and the Mahabharata. And I, and the whole, um, I'm thinking of um, Tony Joseph's early Indians here. And Tony Joseph basically talks about four waves of migration into India and how, the, what we're going to call India now, but the subcontinent generally. And he talks about how very, very quickly there was uh, intermingling between these four different waves of people who were coming here from different areas, right? So one of these becomes that Aryan migration, if you would. But mm. in the end, what you <laughs> end up was a mixed yeah. society that at some point started to practice endogamy, right? And once you start practicing endogamy and once you start saying the woman and the man exist to have these children, this is what the woman does, this is what the man does, I don't believe you're in a gender or sexuality utopia. Yeah. I, so I, I resist this a lot. And I'm, I'm, a, I'm a Savarna woman. I, I think that there are, there are uh, things that we have to look at very carefully and, and be careful about saying the British made this bad. Right, the sure. British man came and codified something, but I don't think like uh, before the British came, everyone was like, Wee! "Let us have the sex that we want to have." Yeah, yeah. Kama yeah. Sutra, where someone's telling you how to have sex of the same gender, but at the same time, I think approximately the same general time. Again, my dates are bad. You have the Manasmriti, right? So it's not this. Uh, so I, I look at all of this and um, all of my, my discussion is Hindu based because that's my knowledge and I'm not, I don't know what it was like in say Manipur or what it was like in-, in I mean, there are references, for example, in Jainism and Buddhism as well, mm -hmm. where uh, again, the idea is also uh, moving away from the ideas of the, the Maya of the body. So there mm -hmm. are examples where Buddha states, oh, you're spending too much time with this companion, with this male mm -hmm. companion in the forest. So it, there's an there's a little episode of uh, there's this uh, I think a dove and a fawn and they both are making love or something. So this companion is looking at them and suddenly wait 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 that, the know, dove is making love with the fawn. Something like that. I'm, Who's I'm, on top? Sorry. Who's on top? I need to know. <laughs> so, the logistics. Some, <laughs> I, I'm like, uh, I could be wrong with the name, <laughs> but I vaguely this is what I remember. So, uh, but the story more the uh, the story is in terms of going ahead and so there's this male companion of this friend and they both are living in the forest for many years. They're really very good friends, blah blah blah. And then so this friend is like uh, uh, he's looking at it and feeling very uh, you know feeling attractive, feeling this, feeling love, feeling romance, all of that. So he says. No, don't do this. The Buddha has stated otherwise, so let's not fall into this Maya. I mean, there are these stories of, uh, you know, even in Jainism, you have such stories. But in terms of 
that they existed and then uh, uh, thoughts of uh, physical union of any sort homo or hetero were just avoided in these uh, uh, mm -hmm. in these you know traditions of buddhism or jainism so the stories it just comes in between as if this happened and he like even like you know there is this uh, women sariputta uh, terigatha so so there is this beautiful book on the elder nuns of buddhism terigatha and yeah. there's the elder the men uh, the elder men teragatha in pali uh, so even there you have examples of these uh, so they say oh these two women were very good friends as if they were as close as man and wife in their previous life that is why they are friends you know yeah. they also kind of uh legitimize something that's happening now now if there is a, a in history for example there are two men and two women they say in the last birth there were this man so they loved and then that is why you always go back and find no one is bad because uh, no one I, 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 if someone's killing someone it's because in the previous birth something else happened so there's always this back story and even in these things so there's a back story like money maker like finds uh, her husband but she is also a nun so she can't fall in love but there's that intent why is that intent there because in the previous birth they were both husbands husband and wife and, you know so also there's a, always disclaimer oh no listen to this it's uh, we are all nice people there so this come from so yeah you know, i mean so the intent is manifest sorry. sorry go on sorry go on go on, go on. <laughs> no I, i just to quickly say it is what what is good about these histories is that it acknowledges that same sex attraction and that uh what i'm going to call not being gender that was assigned to you at birth that phenomenon that existence of that phenomenon is documented in some way in coded ways and so that is is the is the value like knowing your history is valuable um so i'm not saying we don't look for our queer ancestors uh in the hidden places and in the places where they're sort of like ironed out and made straight and unkinky um my the thing is to not look for them for like to 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 blame to to then be like we were perfect and then we stopped being perfect because i don't know yeah. if that's helpful to anyone um yeah. helpful if you want to go through your life being like the brits are are bad oh well, yeah to, to book, like, why i am no we didn't have anything wrong it's they brought it and then which is why we are screwed now yes, yes, no, they yeah. brought it they, they them unfair, and yeah. their laws like how dare they no. Yeah, yeah. I, that was probably uh, that, that's that's on me uh, without without uh, meaning. Oh yeah, it's the man. It's, it's not but, on you, right? No, no, no. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, with with the man see. sitting that way. Absolutely. It's something and, that and that we see as a knowledge. society. Yeah, 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 and and uh, uh, um, and it, that, it's so no, important to pick that up. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but actually, on that point, do you think? What's your opinion on queer representation today and how it's evolved? Do you think? Uh, queer representation in art or literature or in film has actually got better is it being better or more fairly represented in the media or in in art it in art today as compared to uh to, to all to to what we've read and what you guys were speaking about just now obviously this can, it, it's more I opinion as compared to, to i mean yeah so first to bro do you want to go no you go you're ahead in the so, alphabet <laughs> <laughs> anyway so uh about art so first of all art itself is a privilege if someone's doing art i mean so then there's representation in the sense of how many dalit filmmakers do we have how many you know how many dalit actors do we have how many generally in that sense of representation across is nothing like zilch mm. and then art is that kind of a privilege in that so after that passing on like even for an example from for people from the hereditary dance communities even for them to pursue art now is such a such a, it's it's extremely difficult because in the past whatever 50 60 years there's been on upper caste you know there a lot of performers a lot of musicians and dancers i am am again speaking about you know bharatanatyam and carnatic music for example so yes so there is little or no representation in that sense i mean you have a nartaki natraj who is a transgender and she is a wonderful dancer mm. but then where are the other nartakis you know what i'm saying but you can't like for example like they say you know indians muslims are okay we had a, a, a abdul kalam as the president so that doesn't change that doesn't I mean, mean, yes yeah. but you know uh, so that's one just a thought but in, with respect to art i um, this just another quick thing Uh, because there's so many levels we can't like you know 
speak about it even linearly. So there's this men, mm. there's women, and there there are transgenders, and there's a whole lot of a spectrum in between all of these things. You know, then there is uh, non-binary, uh, non-conforming, transgender, of uh, you know, so male to female, female to male, uh, asexual. You know, there's a lot of uh, terminology. Lots of people across the bar, across the thing. I actually read a uh, read a joke the other day about representation. So I, I just quickly share it and leave it open to Rov to comment. In t- terms of oh, we're not represented in movies. Someone says, and then there's this uh, cis man who's like, "What is that about?" So, like everyone's there anyway. And then there's a cis gay man who says, uh, "Oh, we are only there in thirty movies." Then there is this uh, lesbian woman who says, "We are there in like three. Then there are transgenders coming. Like, what is what are you talking? What about? is a what movie? Is yeah. You know. So that is the state. And now th- this is a very again a very high level. And then you go into the class details. You go into the caste details. It's just less and less and less and less and less. And yeah, that's the truth of the day. I mean, yeah. Sorry, Rob. Yeah, I don't want to like that. No, no, no. I, I, I perfectly. Uh, I, I think that was very well put. And I think um, what what we're seeing we're seeing two. What I'm, I'm gonna like if it's gonna say representation. If it, what I'm seeing more of. So I read more than I um. um more than i watch movies uh but i will say that probably you will quite a lot of the time i am seeing more books being written where there's a secondary character who's queer in some form mm. um uh, a book book club i was on uh and a very nice book club just sort of recently said you know i want to read a book of mainstream literature that doesn't uh have a spectacular um person to feel sorry for and then they said you know there's always like some some poor person some dalit person some transgender person and you know it, it is true like roy has done it um i th- i'm told so i don't know for sure that yeah. a burning uh, by make but um you know uh, tanik solanki who i like very much um his one of his i think his first book had like um uh, was like centered around the romance with um a sex worker in thailand and you you kind of like okay it's so i'm not against uh being from a position of privilege and writing around someone who is uh, not from your same background i don't believe that only lived experience can create ex but he's so like suddenly all these people are writing about us as being a very broad term and they're writing about us from their point of view uh so like you, you know when that um that sonam kapoor movie comes out right um yes yes is playing a lesbian yeah, character yeah yeah fawad khan and yeah in and i think it does i'm pretty certain that that movie does what it, what its agenda is which is to talk to straight people about accepting your family and it is a movie set up brilliantly to do that right the boy meets the girl the girl doesn't love him the boy helps the girl get accepted by her family it's a good story but it's a straight person's story right mm. you don't see that story from her point of view it's not told through her gaze it's not her journey of oh lovely i love you yeah, yeah go on yes right and that is why a lot of people watched that movie and didn't like it very much mm-hmm. we, there was the the gay movie that came out and that received a lot of criticism as well and yeah. that was again mostly straight people trying to tell the love story from the gay man's point of view and then it ran into bollywoodisms right yeah. you get this story where people are watching it and the joy of represented on screen has value it has value and i i am not going to be the person who goes how dare you like this this, this film we like all sorts of other filmy trash why can't yeah. we like our own filmy trash but then what happens is you get this you get this very specific story which which kind of can't delve into certain things because it has to do it through the through the tropes and it has yeah. to do as as strongly and as bollywoodily and as sexily as possible i almost watched it for the shirtlessness like very serious <laughs> bisexual so like you know equal opportunity <laughs> it and, i mean but you know no, just no, sorry, one last no, yeah. point the thing that i think is interesting and um, bala uh, maybe you can talk about this in dance because i don't know but i am seeing in small spaces more queer people representing themselves and that's the representation 
I'm interested in. Like A. Revati during lockdown put up her play, which is her memoir, uh, turned in dramatized, and she did it from her her rooftop, right? And I watched that, and I didn't understand. How, like I knew what was happening because I'd read her book in translation, and. You're watching that, and you're like, "This is the stuff I want to see, right?" I'm arranging an open mic of poetry on on Sunday, and it's not official, it's not published, it's not televised, but that is still queer voices coming forward, and I, I am enjoying seeing um, that that liminal space of amateur art and professional art. Which, and you know, Balakrishnan's right. We're not seeing it, the access that we need to see. There need to be more, more voices that are, like I don't reach out as much as I need to to voices that are in other languages um, because of my privilege and because I have not built those networks. And you know, like this is work that we need to do. And that's the, the representation I'm interested in. I'm like, let the straights do what they're doing and we'll criticize it and we'll not criticize it and we'll say, give us jobs. But I'm also like, let us build our own get put out there. And how do we do that? Some In some places, it means sucking up to the Bollywood machine or sucking up to the publishing machine or whatever, right? And in other places, it means being rebellious and being, being like, you know, fuck the art industry. We will create small resistance, independent art. And, you know, then that circulates very slowly and maybe not everyone sees it, but it exists. And that's still valuable, I think. You've, you've almost... You have made uh, something and we have not seen it or you think we have not seen it. Please send it to Just Learning, send it to Balakrishnan, send it to me. We want to know. Um, we need to know. Oh, yeah. yeah, please share, share any media or uh, content you've, you've come across in the, uh, in the comments. I'm sure we'll pick it up and uh, share it with you guys. You know, that's such a fabulous point because it's, it's almost perfectly brought me, brought me to the next question that I was planning to ask uh, both of you and Bala, and you almost uh, teased the question. If you can hold Bala on to that thought for a second. If you can hold of on course. to that thought for a second. Of course. I of loved course. what Rose said about the voice, the gaze, yep. written by someone for another set of people. I'll read you something. It's not mine. So mostly, uh, just to di digress from what Badri said, I'm going to, if I'm, um, I mostly read other people's poetry, uh, but so I'll read someone else's poetry now. It says, <clears throat> don't kiss me. I will become unclean, I'd say. She deliberately pressed my lips against hers. Don't touch me. I've just bathed, I'd say. She press against my body with her breasts seductively. Don't fall on me. It's not proper. I chide. She'd forcefully jump on me. I don't want to make love today. It's my vrata. I can't sleep with you. I don't want to, I'd say. But she'd make love with renewed vigor. So this is a poem written about 300 years ago by this courtesan called Mudupani. And it's a female's voice. And there's such a different, you know, I don't, have, I don't even have the words to say. So when you read it more, I've been working on this for about three years now, her poetry, and it's about 500 odd verses of uh, erotic poetry about her love life, her uh, balances with, uh, and she has written it in the voice of Krishna and Randa and Neela and all of that. But, it's basically that, you know, I was just wanting to add this to the addition of the voice, how important it is. And the thing is, women's voice is not heard at all, yeah. here and elsewhere. And then to find this gem somewhere hidden, like, because the problem was, you know, when it was found by this uh, gentleman, this was one of those books that was banned by the British, but then banned by the British because Indians uh, filed a complaint. But that's, that's part, that's the part which is almost always no so we like banning things yeah. <laughs> no because the British banned it but then the petition was filed by this uh, Kandukuri Pantulu from Andhra Pradesh but anyway so that no one speaks about so it was re-released after independence but uh, so so C.P. Brown was one of the foremost uh, Telugu literatures uh, uh, he made the dictionary and also he first found this beautiful piece of literature called Radhika Santanam it's such beautiful poetry he said oh this uh, this should have been written by a man and then it's just named differently. Someone just, oh. you know, 
and then then someone said no no it's written by a woman then he said the poetry is seems to be seems to have been copied i have can find traces here and there and you know the examples i mean all without any claims but you know that was the first because that one of those fairly uh, rare pieces i mean there's an, mm. another book by ruth i'm like this big fan of ruth vanita there's another book by women writers across 2000 years and that's also lovely mudu pali finds space in that you have people like anda who's also written so much uh oh lord vishnu like you know uh, give me that once just come and uh, save me for that one night and that's it it's all right like spill your nectar for me you know it's just is and and people have and there's such a uh, wide range of poetry that women have written that's mostly lost then there's yeah. you have the steri gatha which is written by the elder nuns ambapali being one of them so there's just that voice when uh, ru was mentioning the importance of the female voice it is yeah, uh, yeah it is it, how much ever jitna bhi bolo kam hai because we have done such such history as we are also blame to blame like we watch how many movies of uh, uh, people who have uh, men made movies do we watch and how many in comparison do we watch movies of women made like can we just make a promise i will only watch movies made by women i will we don't do that i mean it's all also us and also them but yeah, yeah. sorry just that voice but i just want to say the freshness in the voice of this woman who speaks no bala thank you so much man you pulled that out so perfectly like just so effortlessly as well like I, you said you were lost for words to describe describe the poetry i lost for words to describe how beautifully and how hey. ta- like, that was so timely like uh, mm-hmm. I, 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 if i remember correctly it was i think it was natalie portman right in the oscars a year or two back who wore a dress with all the names of women jacket. directed films yeah, yeah. jacket which is such a cool thing to do and yeah. it, it, it got got us talking about it and, but also the the point uh the point row was making about representation in and the the case and uh and 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 the lens through which we we see some of these things right uh mel and ruhi recently recommended that i watch it's creek i'm not sure if you guys have had the chance oh, to yeah, do it oh yeah it's a lovely series i'm i'm in love with that thing absolutely incredible but the most amazing part at least or or one of the most amazing parts because there's also once you finish watching it i'm sure you'll watch the documentary that they've also published straight as a after. documentary yeah it's called warmest regards i've seen it or I something along the lines okay. but finish watching finish watching it and then watch it yeah. right okay. but just the fact that and and i i actually uh, I, i said celebrate earlier but more than celebrate what we're talking about is normalizing right because this is happening around us and this doesn't need celebration this needs normalization or it it and what shit creek does so well is normalization of queer love and saying that it's not different to any hetero relationship and does it in such a non confrontational it's not in your face and i was just thinking with uh with what you're talking about in terms of some of the media we consume today how uh something like shit creek does such a wonderful job of it and it'd be so nice to see so much more uh but you also set me up for a question that i was i was hoping to start i'll probably start with uh with with asking bala this right because you you spoke about how art is privileged or or biased and and uh, rose spoke about some small pockets where we're trying to open up but how can we in in your opinion or uh, i'm sure you're giving this some thought but how can we be better at creating more uh, open or inclusive spaces for historically oppressed people or communities uh especially in the in the space of creating art hearing their voices because it's it's like saying oh we, i will exclusively I, i will good consciously make an effort to watch uh women uh, movies made by women or uh consciously watch uh, content that caters and accounts for everyone's equality right so like i'm sure you've given this some thought in terms of how can we be better and how can we create open open and honest spaces for doing so hmm. you want to start bala i i mean i'm either way i've been just starting so i, I feel very like please starting. please do i mean it's it's because rose set you up for this question i just wanted to i did uh, I, I wanted to further ahead in I'm the sure. alphabet. <laughs> and I'm I'm sure I'm sure we get we get to her because what I also want to touch upon I'm conscious of of time is after we speak about this I'd love to hear you guys uh share some of your poetry 
and i don't want i don't want us to go through two episodes we will we uh, where we haven't covered your work but bala please yeah so the thing is within the they are very hierarchical spaces i'll speak about for example carnatic music bharatanatyam odissi all these classical arts because that's also an invention of the past few years what is classical what is folk but bullshit you know uh so now uh, we have the see when you say when you have uh, when you ask about what is it that we can do to let more people in almost all the time the traditionalists will say oh if there's talent they'll come up anyway you know like they say if there's no reservation if, like if they have talent if they study well they'll come up anyway you know which is bullshit i mean they can't yeah. because there's so much that's different you know the life experiences the growing up years everything is different and you have to account for it because you have uh, had that privilege you have a head start already you have like a real real head start which no one seems to notice and they say oh let's be democratic about it no because you can't be democratic about it the only way i can just see is you just have things like reservation or res- reservation also won't do but you just say this whole thing this whole season i think the problem with the, these things is the only thing that will work is extremely extremely strong uh, positions to take like i say this december season will only be by women like december season is big concert thing i mean unless you do go that far people will not even like move an inch there's so much uh, complacency and uh, there's so much inertia of just being comfortable in your space and they say ha huh, unko agar uh, if they can if they sing well they'll come up if they dance well they'll come up but then the dancing well singing well uh, it there's so many people they touch uh, people's back for example men to find out if they have kunal do if they have the sacred mm. to find out if they can teach then there are things about then they'll uh, slightly ask the language gives it away uh, you know the different specific words you speak about in all these circles and all of these circles sorry to say work work, work like you know close handle mafias of some sort because they're all like yeah. oh he's my friend he she's my friend he's that that's it it's a close knit group and to even break into it because of your caste class boundaries is very difficult like i there's so many people who just can't continue their dance dance in india is extremely expensive to learn mm-hmm. to do to uh, to even continue so it's it is expensive it's such a uh, such an upper class uh, thing to do and an upper caste thing to do there is uh, uh, after your arangetram these days like there there, there was this lovely talk of leela samson uh, one of the greatest bharatanatyam dancers come on my door she speaks about what is the need for this whole idea of arangetram you make it like a wedding and you spend like lakhs in it so there is that part and then you say people who will dance will come up anyway then there's the other thing of pay and perform now many pe- people are t- taking their stand against it in dance especially in terms of people who would pay and these are all people who can pay and what about those people who are very eligible who could have learned if only you know i had a conversation with someone and they said oh i'm writing this paper and something about and uh, it was some piece and then i had my father read it for me but i'm saying that is privilege like you have parents who can kind of guide you in your things you can because it's all you know in those compartments of uh, structure it's all structured and you have contacts you have friends friends of family known people yeah. uh, friends of families at universities all of this is there so keep it get well in the community break it break into it in any sort of way it's impossible i mean however you say it's very very unless you want to be this artist who's hidden in, in their own space and does art for themselves in their own room it's not possible so what do you do because it's in, it is impossible to break this it's there like it's there like these walls of uh, steel or whatever you have to make exclusive things saying only these people are allowed like how do for example when i think about it like as i'm speaking i'm thinking how do queer queer film uh, films get made get recognition they start queer film festivals that's it you need to have just them that's it i mean just us you know in that sense of uh, Uh, only women concert series this whole month this whole year four years whatever it is like uh, i also hear a joke from uh, noel grand i don't know if it's my grandmother or someone they said for all the things men have done 300 years of suffering is okay we have suffered 2000 years 300 years they get like you know just badgered down because there's also not all men not all this no other bullshit i mean let them suffer let us suffer i mean men are trash i think we have to accept it at some point so 
I'm sorry. I just took it. No, I'm so happy that I'm not the one who has to say it. <laughs> I'm just like, <laughs> I'm one of those so cool happy girls. you're going for it. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, so the problem is unless you have exclusive things, events, uh, journals, anthologies uh, written uh, for, by, and funded by the government. Because the problem is also the funding doesn't come because obviously you don't know yeah. people. These people know people because they are just born into that community. Yeah. You know, so you are because you, you already will. know. So sorry, I just got too excited. But that's the thing. I think you just have to have exclusive things just for. Uh, yeah, that's the only, and that's how it will start. Now, how does uh, small uh, queer films get into these mainstream festivals? Because they had a queer film. I, I'm not uh, linearizing that this is why it happened. I'm saying all of the, these are methods to increase visibility. Because otherwise, it's impossible for them to break into these things. And even if you're set, like for example, this, sorry, I'm just going on. No, you speak. No, no, please do. No, no, please, please. Finish it. Finish it Bala. Sorry, no, it is, yeah. So the other thing about, uh, you know, uh, in dance, by the time they say, oh, it's uh, genderless, there is this idea of... Uh, but the problem is, most of them don't even make use of it. Like, after, uh, like, in the past 60, 70 years, most of the time, men have only danced to bhakti pieces because there's so many of these love poetry, erotic uh, poetry, padams and javelis. They're so erotic, so be be beautiful. And they're always from the voice of a woman. So, men, most of them didn't even dance. But then now, people are... They do it here and there, but the problem is they call oh gender, atma, soul. Yes, yes, yes. But like, go ahead with that idea. I mean, don't. <laughs> That's the other problem because everyone speaks about it. The other problem that I have is everyone asks the right questions, but you can't keep asking the right questions for many years. Yeah. Thanks, Bala. My own answer actually oh. follows from what Bala did because the thing that I've been most excited about this year is oh, lovely. this collection. So this is The World That Belongs to Us, an anthology of queer poetry from South Asia, uh, edited by Aditi Angiras and uh, Akhil Katyal. So this is a collection that started with them sending out a message saying, we want poetry from LGBTIAQ people. And then uh, they talk in the in the um, in the preface about how, you know, people would write into them saying, in your long list of the things, you left out pansexual, you left out bisexual, you left out the Nupi Mamba, you left out Aravanis, you left out Tiruna, um, Tirunangais, you left out the Kotis and Hijras and Pantis. Like, people would write in and say, so they would keep editing their list. And at some point, they kind of went, we, we might still have left people out. I think they went a little far in one place because someone said, can allies write? And they were like, sure. And I'm like, why? Let allies make their own damn movies and write their own damn poetry somewhere else. But like, <laughs> like that's not the, the, their point was we want, we want everyone. And in their, this thing, in their preface, they acknowledge that they don't get everyone. But this thing of making the collection from, like, from, uh, the community is saying specifically only these people. I'm looking at, this is uh, 2019's uh, All Ilya Dalit Mahila Adhikar Manch. And uh, one of the things um, of this, I don't know if you've seen this, this calendar. So it's, it's no. the whole thing is art illustrated by Dalit women and poetry uh, sometimes translated but the poetry is by, by Dalit women. And what, November is by Chandani Old Sosle, and she's um, an activist in Bangalore. She works in Payana. Uh, I think she's a founder, I'm not entirely certain. And this is translated by Pratima Nandakumar, who is a very big deal in Kannada poetry. In, mm -hmm. in here as well, I think it's the same Chandani. Um, where's it gone? Oh, damn, uh, page 248. Here she's, uh, if, I'm, if I'm looking at the same person, this is, here she's translated by Mamta Sagar, who is again a very big deal in Kannada poetry. So the, the thing seems to be at least partially to go where the art is already and figure out how to amplify them where they yeah. are. Because it's not of the time we are talking about the large amount of infrastructure structure for especially for I think the performing arts the infrastructure is super 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 important whereas for writing one of the things that I'm finding is that the infrastructure is important but there um 
very broadly, the, the things that you need to write are a room of your own. Whoa, right? Or the time of your own. Or okay. active, right? So like in some senses, if you're in an activist space, a lot of the work towards creating a room of their own, that's being done or it's being attempted to be done. And the artists are there. Um, I'm speaking right now specifically of, of writing because um, like Shil Chandni is in textbooks, uh, Kannada textbooks now. Uh, Shilok Mukti is in Kannada textbooks yes, now. Yes, and nice, nice. Amazing. I don't know if you've seen uh, Shilok perform or Chandni or A. Revati. Um, and I'm I watched Shilok perform, yes, yes. Right? So I'm specifically talking about these, these women, <clears throat> women who do not perform. Shilok performs in English sometimes, but these are women who do not perform in English. They are not performing from that that specific and i'm not saying that other artists don't exist but so what happened here was they figured out a space they did other work and then they found this avenue of being able to express themselves and then so in some senses it isn't like we go and we we say i will give you a space chandni i have discovered you because chandni is doing the work already yeah as a problem with that whole savior complex yeah. Yeah. And uh, Chani uh, has a problem with some of the events that I've done because Chani will say your events are too elitist and it's feedback that I've had to look at and say what do I do with this how do I change this and you know I made efforts and you know that you've failed here and you know that you've failed there and you know that this part is okay and then you have to say okay so it's not about me uh, saving her it's about what are her space what's she doing there that I haven't gone to Right? There is some element of that as well. I remember uh, I was at an event a while ago when uh, Rumi Harish was there. Rumi is in the school. Oh, yeah. Yes, yes. Like, seriously, this is like a Bangalorean's dream because like, <laughs> so many Bangaloreans are here. I'm, I'm, I'm being smart. My city is the best city. But um, yeah. you won't so the only thing I understand when I looked at that book was uh, I was just looking for a Tamar poem. I didn't find it. You didn't find I, any? I wrong, but oh, no. it's there, it's there. I don't know. If it is there? I, I remember I checked it out. We'll, we'll, we'll go through it again and, and see if we can find one. But, so Rumi, uh, Rumi Harish was talking um, because uh, he was uh, trained in, I think it's Hindustani classical, yes. right? And uh, Masum, uh, Masum Parmar was there. Parmar, Masum, Parmar. Mas Masum is um, multi, like is trained in two or three different schools of dance. I think, I'm not entirely certain, but both of them were talking of several things. One was that their approach to art was, was not one single school. So they're not coming there with, I'm going to follow every single rule. And so, like some of the rules are patriarchal, some of the rules are casteist, some of the rules are um, to stay Your with- Your guru's rules, some of the rules are yeah. your gender's rules, some of the rules and are stage rules, again, space rules. Yeah, both both these traditional musical uh, the things are endogamous, as as all institutions are. And Masum was saying, I can't, I find it difficult to apply for an international uh, festival or, or a dance festival because I can't tell them what dance I do because they won't accept my. They, there's no room for them to explain what I do, right? And so this is so this is not just. Um, a, bar a barrier to Masum because Masum is queer. This is a barrier to like changing. And I'm, um, Balakrishna, I'm speaking from the outside here from what Masum said, but then you go, I have seen you dance and it is incredibly moving. And if you can't put that in a festival, is the festival doing what the festival needs to do? Um, which to me is the festival needs to, to be able to cater to both sets, right? To the people who know and to the person who wanders in, they were dragged there by someone who then sees something beautiful and says, okay, I get why the thing that this festival for is important. But if the festival, which a festival, a film festival, a reading literature festival, uh, a dance, music, poetry, uh, song festival leaves out people who, because it can't fit in a category. So, you know- That is a problem because when you don't, yeah, yeah when you do that, a lot of people get left out and even here they get left out too. I mean, yeah, that's, I don't know. We have to- We're back at having, we have to make our own festivals and we have to have the, the, the categorizations as loose as possible. Like, you know, to sort of go, 
if if you say you're queer we your like this festival is for you and we want your work and we want your art and we will figure out a way to 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 do whatever it is that might not be fitting in uh because we hadn't thought of it we will think of it now um if it's language we will we will say please share it we will we will listen to you even if we don't understand the words if it's subtitles needed we'll put the subtitles if it's you need three extra boxes you get the three extra boxes and that's the job that those of us who have privilege and are connected or are creating privilege within the community can do um i think um and then to like i said go to the places where we are where we're like oh they don't have privilege and see what they're already doing look at their networks of of art and power and be like yeah that's that's a network of art and power i want to acknowledge yeah um there's a reason lakshmi tripathi that she's doing right now and it's not only because she's uh from like a minuscule minority whatever you may think about what she's doing now what's up what's up what she's doing <laughs> <laughs> They are all people that just want to protect this them and <laughs> I mean such such beautiful answers. I've I've really enjoyed keeping quiet and listening to you guys go for it. It's just so enlightening, and I'm so so grateful and pleased to have both of you on today. Uh, I'm also con- conscious that it's just past nine, I think. Uh, and and we still haven't touched touched your poems, and I would really like to hear. some of the work that both of you have written uh and i'm sure we we're going to continue this again and again and again and we'd love to have you guys on multiple times but i don't think i'd be i'd be okay with myself if i let two episodes pass through without hearing about your work so uh bala do you want to start with you you spoke about uh early on in the episode you spoke about some of the work you'd written uh last year so is that yeah. something you'd like so, to share with us and then we go to uh grow uh yeah. and take it from there Yeah, I mean, I I hope I'm not interrupted your flow. I mean, you guys were, I, but I I just really want to get to our. Post, I get it. I get it. Taking get it. over here, thanks. So, uh, so last year there there's this beautiful space that we curate in Chennai called Kamakshi Mahapil. A friend of mine co curates, and then uh, she asked me to kind of join them. And so at some point we were thinking uh, the anniversary and to celebrate in some sense the anniversary of uh, uh, the. section 377 whatever it is i mean it was a happy day time and everyone was like yeah we should do something about it and so last september i was working on this piece so as i went across history and stuff and then i kind of uh, uh three when actually when actually the i'm using actually so much of okay. it <laughs> when the uh act was struck down i found this uh book uh, in pdf form suddenly because i had heard of it i had read excerpts of it it's called less than gay Com- compiled by uh, aids bhedva virodhi andola and all of us know it i mean i am sure roh has probably engaged with it as i don't know for many many years but i don't in- think i've i don't think i've read it I- oh it's such a beautiful piece of work oh my god yeah. you should i'll Could send you email it to me i will i will i will Thanks. i will So it's one of the most wonderful books ever written, I think, and uh, it also kind of coincided with the time that uh, I was born, the time when the book was written. Uh, it was just a lot of things coming together for me when I had that book in my hand two two years ago, when actually the law was struck down. So uh, the history goes back about the eighth Hindu Virodhi Andolan, a group of people who kind of came together, collected stories. So the importance of stories was felt so much then. because uh, even like in the later rulings the thing was i don't know anyone who is from the community i don't know matlab what do i do so the importance of queer personal stories were so importantly felt then and that in some sense uh, uh, started and it was the kind of the first uh, document to publicly demand uh, uh, lgbt gay rights in india and that's what started and that's why we are here in some sense uh, there is uh, siddharth from there who passed away about 2 years after that uh uh because of cancer uh who was one of the, the one of the most important people in that set of people also there was dr sani who i spoke to much later before i wrote the piece because i wanted to talk to someone who had actually been part of that organization at some point so it was dr p sani who was part of the aids bhid bavaro the andolan who had compiled the book and you have people uh who we now think are very cool say shit things about the book when it came out so they had a 
sorry i'm just going too much of the book because i love the book and the what the work it has done and so i based my piece on the book so for example you have a v sangvi who says uh, it is uh, pornography uh a v sangvi then you have uh, actually this is a little uh, god i mean uh, uh, what's her name god 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 that kamla bhaseen she seems to say something like uh, oh uh, i'll i'll quote actually give me a minute i'll just she seems to say something like uh, they actually forwarded it to a lot of people once the book was compiled so she uh, thank you for the letter good wishes she just said that's it uh and then oh sorry sorry she said i don't know what to say i don't have any information on the issue sir she is supposed to have said Ooh, that's so shady <laughs> exactly so i mean there's also the time where i realized uh, what who we think as these love i mean people learn i am okay to that i mean people learn they learn so the things that people like you know i couldn't when i read that i was shocked when someone kamla basin as some as kamla basin she literally said i don't know what to say i don't have any information on the issue when they asked them about homosexuality about the book about the compilation of queer stories so you have all of these things happening and then uh, when they had a public thing of uh, when they released the book in a press release Uh, all the journalists were just laughing, and we, Sang, we much later wrote a review saying it was it's a pornographic book. And then uh, the only thing they had to ask was after the press release, only question they had to ask was uh, the members who were what in private. That's the only questions that that was asked. I mean, so uh, and at some point there were about eighteen uh, people arrested in nineteen ninety two from Central Park. Delhi were looking who were cruising and finding they arrested them find it people turned up at the station saying you can't do this and they were just standing there but that's how it started so uh that piece of book was so so important i read it and read it more and read more and i started writing it also for myself because i wanted to feel it. like for example uh, this is my book of i started writing those stories back in my book because i wanted to feel it to sing it if at all so then what i also realized was as i was reading it there is such beautiful exploration expression of love that they had and it is so normal i mean the word that we earlier used i mean we are the only way is to normalize it and you go back to these beautiful poetry across centuries especially padam zinjavali erotic poetry uh, poetry that comes from the temple dancers community poetry of for example of muddu paini the courtesan all of these poetry also speaks about love and we don't know what gender meant then who it was written for who was it written by who that's all very muddled up you really i mean yes you can say it with some sort of certainty but what i found was there are these beautiful expressions of love which were the same across a poem that is 2000 years old and in these in these stories of queer people which is documented in the book so what i did uh, it emerged i mean it was not something i consciously fell into i just kept reading the book again and again that's it i did because i knew i had to do something around these were the this was i have to do something for this so as i read the book again and again what emerged like they say was this equality between the two words the expression the words used the pain of separation the pain of union the passion of union the joy of it all it's the same so i would read a story of these people and sing a song that had the same underlying idea of love and with the same phrase for example in a story someone would say uh, uh in terms of uh, uh yeah so uh, in a story they say uh yeah i'm just looking at a few notes i mean i'm just looking at a small thing which i can quickly yes so there's a story written by this girl uh, from i think siliguri uh, who says well of loneliness and she says love letter was not in sinhala somewhere in sinhala written in bengali girl living in siliguri north bengal to the columnist in a bengal weekly for the last uh, can i do we have time for me to read the story or what should, what do we do bala we 100% have time please do i'll quick uh, because the thing is i can't decide what excerpts to read we could excerpts no. do such bad thing of i mean so uh 
So yeah, she I mean, says as as long as it's not getting too late for Ro, I'm more than happy I'm to read it. Excellent. Yeah. So then please do. Beautiful. Ro, so you must sitting... read the book. I will send you the book. I think we should do something about it. I mean, such a piece of. I mean, it's, it's just lovely. Anyway, so because we're both sitting here like interested children, just listening. For the last, so please go. For the last. Time. So there's a girl writing from Siliguri in Bengali. Oh, there's another interesting story. Oh God, I can't decide. So there's another from <laughs> Malayalam. Oh God, how did I miss that? Ah, oh, God. Ah, oh, okay. I mean, anyway. So I'll read the Siliguri because I started off with it, but I'll also give you the g- gist of the other story as well. Uh, we'll, we'll do a, we'll do a part three called Storytelling with Bala. I guess yeah, I can I, I can I can already see it coming together this is great yeah. but no sorry sorry I'm going to cook it for again uh, for the last 3 years I have been in love with a girl she also loves me a lot when we first met it appeared like friendship but one day things went wrong she hugged me tight a tingling sensation ran all over my body i tried to keep a safe distance from her but she wouldn't let me she came closer and closer we spent nights together she would lie on my breasts and i would be lost in ecstasy we began to find each other irresistible and craved for more incidentally i'd also like to state that i had had lesbian relationships with a lot of other girls before and all of them found me irresistible but for one reason or the other i had to ditch them this girl krishna is different she is different from the others when she comes to me all my worldly worries end she fills me with joy the idea of separation pains a lot we would like to settle down but the question is how since we are both girls society would look down upon us as perverts that thought drives me crazy sometimes i also think of suicide shall we pass the rest of our lives in such helpless agony our relatives don't even like the way we mix with each other gay scene november december 1980 कथित समय कथित समय यौवन मम विफल मेदमल रूपमतीवन यामि हे चरण मम मरण मति पिथत के तना मरण मति पिथत के तना किमित विषदीर So, in some sense, the same thought is expressed by Radha in Jay Deva Rashtrapati. Mama Marana Meva, what will I do? The pain, I will be driven to death with this pain of separation. The separation kills me. Mama Marana Meva. So she says the same idea, and then there is so much to also read in between these lines of this girl who is in the story, and I don't know. So, so it just emerged. So there were these beautiful stories. and in all of these stories there are more lesbian stories and they were longer they were more heartfelt i worked on them more because there are all kinds may, may, many there's a variety of stories but yeah so this is a piece that i premiered in chennai last year on the anniversary 
then i had gone to nepal uh, for a conference of uh, music and something i didn't about so there also i thought i take the piece there but then the only change i did was then uh, a year ago and uh, imagine the story of this girl is from 1980 it's 40 years ago so, i mean so that and then uh, in nepal what i picked up was an anthology that had come out two years ago and then i picked up that story stories from there because stories are everywhere stories are the ones that make us i mean we are all just stories so in nepal there's a, there was a queer anthology that was released uh, two years ago i picked up that book spoke to contributors of it and i uh, took stories from there also and i uh, mapped the a few of these songs with those stories i had it on in nepal then i did something similar in bombay earlier this year so there's a piece that i'm very if i may say i'm very proud of it because it's come from it's emerged i you know with all these being just here you feel very weird to even say proud but it's emerged in such a beautiful sense because at some points things happen and you can't even stop it you know it just happened at that kind of a, yeah oof so beautiful yeah. so that was that piece and then it connects to jayadeva it connects to 300 800 years of history and yeah bala thank you yeah. so much i'll read the next small excerpt of this and i'll Please uh, do. or i'll read at a later point i'll let ro uh, recite do you want ro to go and then you want it yes. okay sure i think i think ro was just searching through her catalog to decide what she was going to share with us and i hope she's ready ro are you good uh, to take over i'm going to do um this is a year old uh but i feel very anniversary ish <laughs> about it it was oh. published on september on gacy so this is all poets have a sad story it is not a poem but uh, i was a horrible girl, a woman pervert and i was ashamed of myself i looked at other girls out of the corner of my eye i thrilled if i brushed again against one accidentally so accidentally i wanted to hold hands i wanted to be her best friend i wanted her to think of me at night in the morning looking forward to seeing me at school I wanted her to take every breath thinking of me as i swear i was thinking of her i was a dirty filthy freak and i should never have been born If I wasn't feeling like shit because I was turned on by girls, one girl in particular, I'm sure I would have found something else to hate myself for. I was young, female, loud, and had a body. Society does this to you. It molds you until you're all soft and woundable spots, and then it makes you kick yourself. That friendship was maintained by her emotional labor, dealing with my whims and turns, but it took me years to get over my fear of this desire. I went to an all girls college and every day I panicked. I would do it again. Someone would know. Shall I tell you then of my boy's friend whose best friend I fucked silently after he and I broke up, pretending we weren't having sex. It wasn't sex because a penis wasn't involved. Shall I tell you what it was like when she died? She killed herself. her official boyfriend allowed to mourn her while her parents stared at me with unforgiving eyes shall i tell you that 2 years later this first boyfriend married a girl whose horoscope didn't match his but he married her anyway because he was such a rebel throughout these non relationships i obsessively read and reread even cowgirls get the blues with its electric joyous marathon love making one single scene i'm talking about between two cowgirls i wanted that I would tell you I was only reading it because it was interesting because it was literature but I lied. I wanted Bonanza jelly bean. I wanted my friend all these friends to want me like I was Bonanza jelly bean. I wanted to love in the sunlight instead of under the sheets holding my tongue. Many years later I told someone I'm clinically depressed and they replied I'm not surprised. In retrospect neither am i these loves consummated silenced they are i suppose reason enough to have a mental breakdown to say i cannot handle the world maybe it was this trauma maybe it was that trauma you take your pick 
my therapist, a gem of a therapist, didn't give a fuck that I'm queer, bisexual, pansexual. The word pans, pansexual still, even now, like fry me up some bacon. She cared that I hated myself, that I was angry, that I couldn't sleep at night, that I didn't want anything. A very dear friend of mine, a friend friend, not a friend friend, tells me, I don't think you're driven by sex. But sometimes I look at that deep void within myself. It's not that I'm not driven by sex or don't need it, but sex won't be enough. Sex won't make me a real girl again. I need to love again, and I cannot. People will tell you depression is a big cloud over your brain. It is a large dog that pulls you down. It is a fog over your thoughts. For me, depression is a hole in my body, right under my navel. Every day I will cook up some spirit, some zest in my bones. And every day my little hole will leak all of that new spirit out onto the ground. The ground does not need someone's metaphor for life, but it gets it. Every moment of attraction, it is leaked. My latest girlfriend reaching for touch, leaked. What it feels like to say, I don't love you, leaked. It feels awful. There is no excusing it. How can you not love? My entire philosophy, my activism, my organizing is that we must be allowed to love. 377 was only one of the things forcing us into a closet. And I've been so clear for so long that I will not go back there. So it is sinful for me not to be in love. I look back now at the girl I loved, the one who killed herself, and I want to beg for forgiveness. What if I had said, hey, this is sex. Hey, I love you. Hey, I am yours and this is happening. In a cold country very far away, I read Sparrow Waters' Fingersmith and I was enthralled by Sue and Maud. I was beginning to experiment with the phrase, I am bisexual, but it was too late. I wanted to say it with the same unquenchable outburst as Sue's, you pearl, you pearl. Had I ever called my love anything? The nicest thing she ever told me was one drunken night when I forgot to flush, your wine smells like pee. Maybe we wouldn't have made it anyway. Her boyfriend was a sweet, sweet hunk of a man, boring but decent, and I value decent now more than I did then. Maybe today, a year from what is hopefully our final goodbye to 377, now two years, we would be acquaintances at worst, or just another couple of friends who were once lovers in queer women's circles of sisterhood love and dra drama. Maybe she would be a banker, the ultimate sin. And maybe she would be married with children. In her absence, I invest these hypothetical babies with a lot of sentiment. My first reaction to all the joy of that final, final day of 377 was not joy, but anger. We had been cheated. They had told us that we were too few to be given rights. And they had taken those rights away. And now they had restored them. They made our brothers and sisters criminal for loving, for fucking, for taking some joy in this shitty world where everything is so hard unless we hold on to each other. We have to be able to love each other, not just the romantic, the erotic, but to love one another and to say, we are the same, we are different. You are my friend and you are like me and you are different from me and that makes you my family. I wanted more than a final judgment gone right. I wanted a time turner. I wanted the last five years back. I wanted my lost friends back. I wanted our dead ancestors back. Maybe I will would have been the one to drift away. Too tired to love her, too tired for sex, too tired to leave a message, too tired to respond to a message, lying that I was fine, I was fine, I was fine. Maybe I would have been the banker. Maybe I would be her sad story. Maybe she would assemble all the disparate bits of me into a coherent narrative. This is what Rohini thought of 377 in the closet. This is her unprintable thoughts on the transgender rights bill. These are her arms held out and these are her tears. Like a very patient grandmother, she would create a jigsaw of Rohini, and I would have something useful to say to you all today. So, happy belated birthday to my family. All of us are born again every single day. And that's... Oh, Lovely, oh God.
so nice, man. Brilliant. And you know, again, lost for words, but we 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 came around so well as well, right? Because we started from here, we came back to this so naturally. <laughs> I could have never planned for any of this, and it was mind blowing, man. I'm so grateful for both of you, to both of you. Lovely, Rohini. Uh, I really loved it. I mean, it was it is so uh, so is nice, man. That I can read. Sorry. Is it in that book? Ba- I think is Bala it, asked it. This is, is a book. No, um, it's on Gacy, so I can put. I can send you the link. Um, I can put it. I'll see if I can figure out. Yeah, I'm sure we'll get around with this message. But yeah. we we'll need to get to Zoom technicalities. Uh, but guys, yes. Okay, I, here it is. I so I'll just put it in. super amazing. So I think uh, we we'll get the links. We'll share it on on the YouTube comments as well, so people have access to it. We'll share it in the chat. Uh, oh, lovely! Thank you very oh, much. You, you put yours up yeah. anywhere. Bala is uh, Roni has just asked if your works published in uh, anywhere. I mean, and here and there, there's this uh, not online. I think no, no, no. There was a book that was re- re- released by Lai Lai, which has some of it, uh, but uh, not really. No, it's, but yeah, music is there. YouTube, Bala, Bala, yeah, music is there. But then I'll find poetry it. is something. I have to, yeah, we we we're going to do parts three, four, five, six with all your works, both of you. Where you're gonna have like storytelling session, poetry, jazz. So do you write in Rohini? I have a question. Sorry, Badri. So do you write Please. in English? Do you write, okay. write in Kannada? I write in English. I uh, I'm very aggressively monolingual. So, but I like um, I am gonna say that I love listening to Kannada because Kannada has a um, I, I'm sure everyone says says this about that. I know, I know. <laughs> They're like you know, like somebody else will be like, "Too, you come to my yeah, yeah. state." But I, I love the way Kannada sounds in, in like a Kannada guy's tongue. Yeah, yeah. So, Similarly, because I can't write, so the first thing I wrote and I've written since most of what my writing is always in Tamil, and then I translate them into English, but then mm-hmm. I write them in Tamil. You oh. know? so mm-hmm. that's the idea of, because that's the only my my mother tongue is Tamil, so that's the first place well, I. You should to. perform them in the Tamil as well. So I do, I do. Then I well. translate it and stuff. That's but, yeah. brilliant. But, yeah. I mean, but I don't, in the sense, as much as I do music, I don't do poetry because, again, like you said, poetry emerges and some days, like sometimes, it just comes and so. Yeah. yeah. So beautiful, guys. Uh, I think we might have just hit nine thirty. Yeah. Uh, almost right. accidentally perfect, uh, which is so so good. Uh, Before we इश्क पर जोर नहीं है ये वो आतिश गालिब की लगाए ना लगे और बुझाए ना बने तो इश्क कैसा है तो अभी क्या करें what do we do love cannot be forced it's a flame says गालिब which cannot be ignited at will or quenched at will so let's <laughs> that's one thing that I remember from now but yeah okay so uh so we are probably going to wrap up Part one, uh, very, very, very shortly. Before we do wrap up, uh, I feel like Bala said that almost in a matter of his, that being his closing statement. But I'd love for you guys to share any final thoughts you guys might want to with, uh, with the people who tuned in today. For people who are going to catch up with part one uh, later, uh, I, I had, I had very little plans for how this evening session was going to turn out, right? Because when I spoke to both of you, I said I want to talk about love, I want to talk about expression, I want to talk about art, and how all of these things come together beautifully, and how, but, but not just where we've been and what we've done, but I want this to be aspirational just as much. I want to talk about. Where you guys think we should go, how we can be better uh, for each other, and I think you you touched upon it so beautifully. Both of you did through the conversations today. But if you have anything that you would like to finish with, uh, we'll do that, and then we can say we can say bye. So uh, probably broadly touching on uh, to give you a concise version of that, how art could be used for comfort, for solace, for healing within the uh, queer community. And how we can be better together. Ro, we'll start with you this time because I think Bala has gone first alphabetically, numerically, <laughs> in every <laughs> form possible. So I'm going to put you on a spot once. So, um, I mean, art means different things to different people. 
for you know like there for every person who who will look down on say chetan bhagat there is somebody else who found something of value there because they saw themselves in that right and there was a story there that spoke to them at, like at the beginning yeah. so so when we when we wander around saying that art is bad we are also putting down the people who found something of value in that um and i think we all we all enjoy art in one way or another even if we don't call ourselves artistic we listen to things we doodle we we used to color like you know if you give a child a crayon the child will use the crayon um if you give uh when like the child over the years develops and and like their studies on what children do when you put a crayon in their hand right which is we are all artistic um we you might not spend all of our time thinking of ourselves as artistic but even the recognition of beauty is is an artistic tool so what we find and in it depends right like i don't know if i'm finding something oh did we lose bala i think bala just dropped hopefully he'll tune back in I yeah it's probably his internet but um, i'm sure he'll, he'll join us for a closing yeah. statement sorry so welcome. sometimes we're finding you know that value of finding someone who is like you and that matters and sometimes they're talk- talking about something else entirely and that it is the beauty that works for you and that that's amazing and sometimes it's just that's a queer person they're up there i'm happy done right like i i there are books in that bookshelf behind me that i don't like very much but they are written by queer people and so they're in my fucking bookshelf because you know like there there isn't enough queer lit- which are yet that I can I can afford to be picky. And one of the things that I want I think the simplest thing for us all to do for art and for each other is to do um I think I heard of this term when it came to the Obama administration which is that he you know he he was one of these these guys who intended to have gender equality at his at his table meetings but the women would find that you know they're being by other voices so they came up with this thing that they called amplification he's back um so which is that one woman at the table says something and if she got drowned out the other woman would say yes but coming back to what said to repeat what she said state that it came from her and amplify it so they they became a deliberate echo chamber to ensure that they weren't drowned out and that is i think one of the big things that you do for your artist friends for and thus for your queer artist friends and that you do for for dalit speakers for dalit voices for trans voices for queer voices cis gay however you're you're going through through that right if you see art that's that's worth it you amplify it if you can you send money to it if you can't you send other people with money to it but you make sure that it gets seen yeah um create those like and that is and that is the simplest thing that you can do right like the whole infrastructure thing i'm not going to be i can't even begin to solve that sitting here unless it's to be like make money be be, in, be the infrastructure but the thing that we can do here is to amplify each other and to look for each other you know so that's a great message thank you so much ro bala you've come back just in time uh yes. I, I, re- i really really bad time bala reconnects i think he might be muted uh no i'm not time, no yeah you're not but uh yeah. j- j- i was just going to see the the point in creating the the, the amplification point is such a beautiful one and such a strong one about so come again i can you can you say that again sorry i'm just, no, just sorry. trying to connect with my phone no worries bala we can hear sorry. you and we can see you so you're good uh, uh ro just made a beautiful point about amplification right where to ent- uh, and talking about how women in the obama administration uh went back to a previous speaker if that message was lost just to say going back to that point just to amplify that noise and to create an echo chamber there for uh for people to have voices heard is such a strong point and we can do that with almost minimal effort in so many situations right whether it's through sharing whether it's through supporting with small financial donations or or how that might be and thank you very much for guiding us and suggesting we do it i, I really hope we get better at it uh sorry ro you you muted Not just sure before we get to bala you see um the black lives matter movement recently has been doing this like very consciously mm. they 
their list of books that you needed to read if you wanted to educate yourself. But they'd also be like, here's a list of black owned businesses. Here's a list of black writers, black artists. So they yeah. consciously create these, these lists, which, you know, are not comprehensive because nothing is comprehensive, but it's a start, right? Where you go, I'm going yeah. to support black owned business. So we have to be like, I'm going to support queer owned business where I can, that sort of thing. And it can be that that's, I think, something anyone can do without expertise. Um, yeah. No, that's a great stuff. And going back to, sorry, Bala, just one last point, because the Black Lives Matter thing also reminded me about how, like, the moment some, something like BLM started promoting that, other people pick up on it as well. So Disney Plus, going back to my Hamilton Disney Plus subscription, Disney Plus had a category saying these are movies made by Black directors or have predominantly Black cast. Netflix did the same thing as well. You just need someone to start doing that and someone to start speaking about it. And then you trust the world around you enough to say, hold on, we need to stop and do this a lot more. And it's, it's, it's a no-brainer, right? But we just need to get started with it. So no, thank you very much. That's such a beautiful point. Bala, uh, we've, we've cut you off twice before starting. So third time, Lucky, please go for it, man. No, uh, sorry. Yes. So, uh, final thoughts. I think that's lovely what Rose said. Is that was is that the question? Final thoughts. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, yes about yes. I think what Rose said makes a lot of sense. Like I saw uh, uh, a reading uh, list. You know, I think to start with, because we are all reading and poetry is one of the easily accessible in some sense. There was this reading list that I saw about the queer Muslim project. You know. And it had like books and articles that were freely available and some you had to buy and stuff. But then all of it at one place. And like that, similarly, when you go up on Instagram, when I think everywhere, you just, like she said, I think I completely, I can't say anything more. I think that's what we can do from where we are. Now the whole world is in our rooms. Like we have everything within our rooms. No one's going out. The least and the most important thing, I think, is just to share, amplify, to promote, to not, in, in, in a sense, very consciously, not promote in the sense of, ha, main bhi a gaya, apka savior, main, main se yeah. not even that. In terms of, it's so valid. It is, it is so, so important it out. to do it and just amplify their voices and also create spaces just for, just exclusively. I think that's the other thing that I would also say, because otherwise there is, there's always going to be other people coming in and saying, ah, not all men, not all this, not all, not all X, Y, Z. So, yeah. I, think, I don't know. Yeah. Oh, that's that's probably what I think. Yeah. That's, that's a great message. Uh, on that note, thank you very much to both our guests today. I think you guys were absolutely amazing. I really, really, really enjoyed hearing both of you. Uh, I've been receiving a lot of live feedback about people being extremely grateful for everything you've shared today, your stories, your work, uh, and just the vibe itself. And so I'm very grateful for both of you. Thank you to everyone who's tuned in today. Uh, please do subscribe to our channel. We'll have more episodes of this, this sort. Uh, we hope you'll come back. We hope you've enjoyed this evening. Uh, good yeah. evening and good night. Yes, Sorry, Ro. as always. Good night. It was, it was really lovely, Jay. And I don't think you need to worry that Badri will come back and say and feel disappointed at all. I think you did a great job. Thank you very much. I mean, through through this evening, yes. Bales kept referring to me as uh, Badri. So I don't think his presence was missed <laughs> at all. Did you not I mean, tell him? No, I, it wasn't. I, I mean, I've not, I've not gone off live yet, but for the last 26 years, I've been referred to as Badri, Badri's brother, and occasionally as Jaiti. So I have no problems with it at all. I'll, I'll take it every day. But I mean, uh, Jay, it was lovely, lovely to be. I mean, uh, I have not spoken to you at this length in the past, and it's lovely yeah. to have this. I've always spoken, had shorter conversations, <laughs> but uh, always I, glad. We should do the opposite, guys, where one of us I've, makes him do the talking. <laughs> yeah, I think both I'm of sure we get the chance. Get both, both of them to talk. You know what I'm saying, Ro? Like, we'll be asking questions. Yeah. Like, introduce yourself without yes. sure talking about what you do. <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure we'll do this. I'm just about to take us off live. I didn't want to cut yeah. you off be before you yeah. guys finished placing me. I really wanted the world to hear that. So, I just kept us live a well, little that, longer. That's our validation. That just going to go off live now. Thank you. Bye, Thanks for listening. Thanks for being with us. Thanks.